wonderful to see all of you here this morning. We especially want to welcome any and all guests and visitors who may have braved the cold and the ice and all that fun stuff to join us here today. If this is your first time worshiping with us, or if you'd like to get a copy of this for somebody that you know, we do have a gift for you. It's a book that talks about God's love. Uh, if you'd like to, like I said, get a copy for yourself or for someone you know, just get our elders' attention. They would be more than happy to share that with you at this time. Uh, we want to remind you to please let us know that you are here with us this morning. The way you can do that is by filling out one of the communication cards in the pew rack in front of you. Just fill out the front side of that and drop it in the offering plate when that is being collected later on in the service. If you have a special uh, prayer request you'd like included in the worship service today, you can fill out the back side of that same card and during the offering, I'll uh, hold that up and I will come around and collect those at that time. Would you please take a moment and greet those who are seated next to you and wish them a good morning to the Lord. that God gives us. And this time of year when we think about gifts, we usually think about what? Christmas. We think about Christmas presents, we think about stuff like that, but we're going to be talking about the special gifts that God gives us and why he gives them to us. But for now, let's rise and join our voices together as we sing, Joy to the World. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
we join our voices together. Almighty God, you govern all things in heaven and on earth. Hear the prayers of your people and grant us peace through all our days. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We now confess our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, he hath not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we continue to prepare to receive Jesus' body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine, I invite you to reflect on and respond to these four questions, which I am about to ask you now. Do you acknowledge that you are a sinner? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus is your personal Savior? Yes. Do you recognize the true body and blood of Jesus present in and with the bread and wine given and shed for you? Yes. Do you believe that through this meal, God will strengthen your faith to amend your life? Yes. If you answered yes to all four of those questions, you are certainly free to join us at the altar today. and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. You may be seated.
Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this beneficial gift. Because of your mercy, please strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Having been fed with Jesus' body and blood, in with and under the bread and wine, we continue to feed our faith with the hearing of God's word. <laughs> the reading for this Sunday is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone it is the same God at work. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. This is the Word of the Lord. Tasted the wine that had been turned, or tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of our Lord. You may be seated. At this time, we are going to dismiss our children for faith roots. This is a chance for them to learn more about God and his love for them through some fun activities with their friends and peers. Uh, for the rest of us, our service will continue with the gathering of our offering. This is a chance for us to respond to God's generosity by returning to him a portion of what he has entrusted to us. Uh, during this time, I will also come around to collect any prayer requests you may have. We now collect our off.
invites us to come to him in prayer at any time with whatever may be weighing heavily upon our hearts and our minds. Certainly those things that we are struggling with, those needs that other people have, but also our joys and celebrations as well. Today we especially want to lift up prayers for Verna Lohman uh, for uh, healing and a short hospital stay as she's being treated for infections. We also want to pray for the family and friends of Roger Selly, the brother of Carol Reddy, who passed away yesterday. And of course, we also want to continue to pray for Pastor Ryan Hope for uh, Carmen, and for Heidi as they mourn the death of his wife, Robin, uh, earlier this week. Uh, for those who maybe missed the announcement, the funeral for Robin will be held here at the Arnie Mice campus on Saturday. Uh, if you know the people who are mentioned, I want to encourage you to reach out to them with God's love and caring, showing them the same concern and love that God has for them. After each petition, I will end with the words, Lord, in your mercy, please respond by saying, hear our prayer for Jesus' sake. Please rise. God, you give us such great gifts. You give us life and health. You save us through Jesus' death and resurrection. And through the work of the Holy Spirit, you give us faith and gifts that we can use to serve you. Fill us with your Spirit, so that we may not only recognize the special gifts that you have given us, but that we may recognize the opportunities we have to use them for your glory. Lord, in your mercy, we lift up to you those who are struggling in any way, shape, or form. Whether those struggles are about health, finances, emotional or spiritual issues, or whatever else may be weighing heavily in our lives or the lives of those we know. We especially pray for Verna Lohman that she may recover from her illnesses and be released from the hospital soon. And we pray for comfort, both for the family and friends of Roger Selly, and also the family and friends of Robin Hopefrey. We also give you thanks for the many ways that you have answered our prayers in the past and for the good gifts you continually shower upon us daily. Lord, in your mercy, you call us together to be one body, the church. Just as the parts of the body work together in cooperation, we pray that you would fill us with your spirit so that we may work together as well. May our congregation at Timothy be a place where God's people not only find refuge, but also be a place where we can find opportunities to serve you. Help us to shine brightly with the gospel so that all people may come to know you through our words, actions, and attitudes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Jesus Watch over and protect those who serve in the armed forces of our country. We thank you for the men and women who serve us faithfully to secure our rights as citizens. May they serve with integrity and honor. Fill the world with the peace that only you can give. Lord, in your mercy, hear our we thank you for the way you continue to feed our faith through word and sacrament. Just as we have received forgiveness through the blessed meal of Holy Communion, continue to feed our faith as we hear your word proclaimed. All this we ask in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated as we join our voices together to sing, Speak, O Lord, your servant listens.
prays for us, again, peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, like I said at the beginning of the service, this may seem like a little bit of a rewind right now, since we're going to be talking about gifts today. I mean, let, let's be honest, Christmas season is supposed to be over. I mean, everybody hopefully has put away their decorations by this point. I mean, the stores have until next July. Uh, it's true, and you know it. <laughs> And we're starting to try to shift our lives back to normal. Well, is anything normal anymore nowadays? Not really. But yet, even though all the decorations may be put away, even though we may not be singing the songs so much anymore, hearing them on the radio, the gifts are still there. Whatever it is we got under the Christmas tree, we have started to integrate into our lives, starting to use them and make the use of them regularly. It's a lot of fun as we start to get those gifts to see how they fit. But, I want to give you a hypothetical situation when it comes to Christmas presents for a second. Let's say that before Christmas, you really did some brainstorming, you thought about a gift that you want to give to someone really special in your life. You thought about it, you did your research, and then you found what you figured was the perfect <coughs> gift. This is the thing that your loved one has been either wanting or needed, without maybe even realizing it, to make their life better, to maybe make their life a little bit easier. You pay the money, you wrap it up, you put it under the tree, and now you can't wait for them to open the present, see what it is, and be so excited, especially if it was at, like, at the top of their Christmas list, right? And the time comes, and they take the present, and they unwrap it, and they look at it, and they say, oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they set it aside, and they keep opening the presents, and you figure, it's okay, it's okay. Maybe they haven't figured out how great this present is. Maybe they're not sure how they're going to use it. But then in the coming days and weeks after Christmas, they never use it. As a matter of fact, it's still in the box, still all packaged up, ready to go. Nobody, they're not touching it, they're not using it. They're basically behaving like it doesn't exist. That makes you feel really special, right? You say all that time, all that effort, all the research, all the mental energy going into it, and they aren't using it. Or worse, maybe, maybe they're using it in the wrong way. Like you got them this big thing for the kitchen. I don't know what. And the next thing you find them using it for is as a doorstop. To hold the door open as they're carrying stuff through. It's the perfect thing. Or that book that you knew that they would really, really love, they're using it to even out the kitchen table. Sliding it under that one wobbly leg so that the thing sits more stable, right? That would just make you feel so special. You'd say, boy, I'm so glad I spent it. Now, why on earth am I going on and on and on about this? Well, because of what Paul says in the epistle reading from 1 Corinthians for today. In this passage, in that chapter, as a matter of fact, Paul talks about the gifts that God gives all of his people. Look at what he says. He says, there are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. Basically what Paul is trying to tell us, he's telling the Corinthians and he's telling us is, God gives us all these special gifts. Now this is by no means an exhaustive list. We could go into the book of Romans, we can go into the book of Ephesians, we can look all throughout the Bible and find different examples of the gifts that God gives us, gives to his people. 
But what, no, matter, no matter what those gifts are, Paul says this about them. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. In other words, what Paul is saying is this, is whatever gifts and abilities you have are a gift that God has given you, and this isn't something that he did in a slapdash, haphazard fashion, no, this is something that he did considering who you are, where you are, what you're going to accomplish in your life. He said, given who you are, these are the gifts that I know you need. These are the gifts that make you, you. And that's pretty amazing if you think about it. It's amazing to think about the care that God gives to give us those gifts. And yet, how do we often respond to those gifts? Well, kind of the same way that I talked about earlier with that Christmas gift. We don't use them. Maybe the reason why is because we are jealous. Just a little bit jealous. We say, yes, I would love to be able to serve God, Pastor. I absolutely would. But I know I can't speak in public the way that you do. That's just not me. Or you know what? I would love to be able to help out leading, oh, I don't know, say Sunday school, but I just don't have patience to work with little kids. Just forget it. Or you know what? I would love to be able to participate somehow in worship, but God did not give me a musical bone in my body. I don't know how on earth I could possibly do anything to do that. Or maybe, maybe we're well aware of what our gifts are. We know how God has made us. We know what God has given us. And we look at that gift and we say, how am I supposed to use that? How do I use this to serve God? It's like a question that one of the youth at a former congregation asked me a number of years ago. We were talking about spiritual gifts in a Bible study, and afterwards she came up to me and she said, Pastor John, that's great. That's wonderful. I don't know how to use my gifts. And I said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, Pastor John, I'm an athlete. I'm good at sports. And I said, yeah, you absolutely are. No doubt about it. And she said, fine. How do I use that? How do I use that to serve God? And my exact words were, uh, she had me for a little while. I didn't know how to answer, and that's frustrating, right? When you look at your life and say, I know what my gift is, I know what I'm good at, but I have no idea how to use it. Or maybe the problem is, is we're not even sure what it is. We look at our life, we look at things that we might excel at, things that we might be able to do, and we just are coming up blank. Say, I don't feel all that special. I don't feel like I have anything that sets me apart. I don't feel like, I don't feel like God's given me a gift. It'd be sort of like if you go to a family Christmas and everybody else has been given a pile of presents in front of them, and you've got nothing. Say, what am I supposed to do with nothing? Or maybe the issue is slightly different. We know what our gift is, but we don't use it to serve God. We say, you know what? Mm -mm. I got my own things I've got to do. I've got to use this to make money or to make myself better or to do anything like that, but you know what? I just don't have the time or the inclination or whatever to use, whatever it is God's given me for service. That's a shame. I think that would break God's heart. It'd be sort of like what I said at the beginning. If you saw somebody using that new Cuisinart you got for a doorstop. We need to remember why God gives us those gifts in the first place. Paul tells us, Boldly in 1 Corinthians, he, he says, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for what? The common good. The reason why God gives us these gifts 
The reason why he makes us the special people that we are is so that we can serve others with those gifts for the common good. That's why he gives us all of our gifts. And God loves to give gifts. Starting with the greatest gift of them all. The gift of Jesus. Because Jesus is the perfect gift, the one that we all needed so badly. Because of our sin. But God loves us so much that as a free and complete gift, God gives us Jesus to die on the cross, to rise from the dead, to forgive us our sins, and to make us his children. That's something that we all believe here, right? <laughs> okay, I'm going to assume that you're just worried about the drive home or something. It's okay. But here's the thing. For those of you who said right or just said it in your mind, guess what? The fact that you're able to do that, that's a gift from God as well. Think about what Paul said at the very beginning of the reading. He said, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Our faith, which clings to the forgiveness that God has given us, is a free gift from God as well. So it's not just that God gives us his son. It's not just that God gives us forgiveness. God gives us faith as a free gift also. The ability to cling to God, to recognize who he is, what he's done for us, to boldly confess that Jesus is my Lord and Savior, that is a gift from God as well. And then it's on top of those gifts that God has already given us that the Holy Spirit gives us those other gifts, those special gifts and abilities. And here's the thing. No matter what you may believe about yourself, you have these gifts. God hasn't overlooked you. God hasn't forgotten about you. You do have those gifts that can be used for his service. Now maybe you're thinking that, you know what, my gift seems so small and insignificant. I can't go preach a sermon. I don't have the knowledge to lead a Bible study. I can't do anything like that. Well, it doesn't matter. Big or small, they all work together. It's very much like well, a famous fable that Aesop told. You know the fable of the crow and the jug? The story goes is that one day there was a crow who was flying around, and he was feeling oh so thirsty after a good day of flying. When he landed and he found a jug, and he looked in the jug and he realized that there was a little bit of water down in the bottom of the jug. And all that water looked so good. The crow was so thirsty, but try as he might, try as he might to cram his beak into the jar's lid, into the jar's mouth, he could not get down to the water. It was just out of reach. Now a different animal might have given up, but the crow was clever. And so what did the crow do? It started gathering pebbles, little stones. And one by one, it dropped the pebbles into the jar. And with every pebble that landed in the water, guess what happened to the water? The level rose. And he kept tossing pebbles in until finally the water was high enough that the crow could drink his fill and be satisfied. See, that's the thing about small things. On their own, they might seem insignificant, but when you pull them together, wow, things change. And that's why God calls us together to be part of the church. It's so that as we take our gifts, whether they're big or small, we can pull them together and make a larger impact in the world around us. You may look at your gifts and say, I don't see how on earth this could make a difference. But let me assure you, it can. But what if you're like that young lady I mentioned? The one who said, I have no idea how I can use my gift to serve God. I'm an athlete, Pastor John. What can I do? I wish I could rewind the clock a little bit, because I have a better answer than, uh, now. 
I like to think that I remembered this eventually and talked to her about it. If not, I'm going to tell you what my answer should have been. My answer should have been Danny Werfel. Do you know who Danny Werfel is? A couple of you do, a couple of you don't. Danny Werfel in the 90s went to, I believe it was Florida State, where he was a Heisman Trophy winner. Okay? He was a big deal. Also, um, his parents are a friend of the family, name dropping, yes, I know. So rude. Anyway, his dad's a Lutheran pastor. Also, my parents knew him in college. Anyway, that's not the important part. Now, Danny Werfel obviously has some skills and talents, right? Because he's a Heisman Trophy winner. And from what I understand, he was the one who led his team to a national championship for the first time ever. The kids got skills. How does he use that to serve God? Well, by being a good example. After Danny won the Heisman, a lot of newspapers and magazines started calling, asking for interviews, including Playboy magazine. Playboy always interviewed the Heisman Trophy winner. And so they called Danny and said, Danny, we want to sit down with you and we want to interview you. And Danny's response was, no, thank you. The lifestyle you represent isn't consistent with who I am and what I believe, and for that reason, I must respectfully decline. Danny understood that his talents had put him in a position to be a good example, and he took that seriously. But he did more than that. He did more than that. After graduating from college, he went on to play football for the Washington football team. That's not what they were called back then, but that's what they're called now. Also, the Packers, I try not to hold that against him, uh, the Bears, <laughs> and eventually the New Orleans Saints. Now, unfortunately, Danny eventually had to leave the NFL. But after he did that, he went on to basically work with a ministry in New Orleans that provides housing for those in need. They're expanding throughout the South right now. And I can't help but wonder, is that an opportunity that he would have had if it wasn't for his background? The fact that he was an athlete opened doors for more ministry. Now granted, this young lady that I was talking to, she may not ever win a national trophy like the Heisman. She might not get that sort of thing, but I would have pointed out to her also she had open doors with her teammates that other people may not have had. She could build those relationships and show them care and concern in a way that nobody else could because of what she was able to do on the courts. See, that's the thing. Sometimes we look at our gift and we say, I have no idea how to use this or what to do, but the reason why God gives them for us is because He knows. He knows that that is what we need. <coughs> and he promises that those opportunities will be there for us. See, that's the beautiful thing about the gifts that God gives through his Spirit. They're never a mistake. They're never a waste. They're given to us so that we can serve God by serving each other. So maybe your gift still is wrapped up a little bit. Maybe you've been sitting on a shelf for a while. My encouragement to you is this. Take it down, dust it off, unwrap it. Put it to use. For the glory of God. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and our minds in true faith and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Uh, we have just a couple of ministry reminders before we go. We need to get to them now. First of all, Pastor Ryan will host a four-week class on the Sundays in March following worship at our Wyatt campus. There is a makeup day of April 3rd. This is available to 5th through 8th graders who are eager to receive the Lord's Supper but haven't been through early communion preparation or class yet. One parent, guardian, or mentor, in other words, an adult-type person, 
means to attend each class with the kiddo. Sign up is on our website, or you can contact Pastor Ryan. We also want to invite you to come and enjoy a meal served by the Timothy Lutheran Youth on Saturday, February 5th, from at, starting at 6 p.m. at the Family Life Center at the Artie Mice campus. Lasagna, Caesar salad, garlic toast, and a dessert will be served. Tickets go on sale last week. So if you didn't get them last week, you can get them today and going forward, child care will be provided. Proceeds will support the National Youth Gathering trip and tickets are $30 a couple. Ladies, uh, you are invited, <clears throat> excuse me, you are invited to the next Friends Cafe in the Fellowship Hall on Saturday, January 29th from 9.30 to 11 a.m. to hear guest speaker Linda Meyer Nielsen share how God protected and healed her after a serious accident. Plus, you can enjoy coffee and big treats at this Women of Hope event. No cost or registration is required. And also don't forget that a special voters meeting is scheduled for today after the 10 a.m. service at Wyatt uh, to allow the congregation an opportunity to discuss and ask questions about the Phase 1 program action plan for moving the Wyatt expansion forward. So we want to invite you to that voters meeting uh, in just a couple of hours to join in, to ask questions, to learn more, and so that the congregation can continue to move forward in faith to where God is guiding us. But now let us rise and join our voices together as we sing, Let Us All With Class of Voice. 